further, let's head for the infrastructure, am I right? Yeah. I'm glad we've got it! I drove here tonight, guys, yeah, paved roads all the way. Fuck you, paved roads, well done. All the wonderful men and women of the infrastructure, thank you for your service! Yeah. Had a shit yesterday, guys, not gonna lie to you, had a shit. I thought, you know what, I'm not dealing with that, flash. Someone else can have it. Thank you, men and women of the infrastructure. You vote any way you want. Now, uh, <laughs> the real reason I've been brought on last, though, guys, is I'm inspiring. Thank you. So you're looking at, I, your headband looks great, Tone. Yes, it does. I actually wear headbands for political reasons, guys. Um, this one's actually, I wrote this headband to remind me about the dangers of Facebook, you know? You know, you're walking down the street and you go, why the fuck am I wearing Facebook? Oh, Facebook, oh, Facebook knows all your information, Tony. Stop giving them your details. Facebook can manipulate you. Not me, it can't. I've been lying. <laughs> Screw you, Zuckerberg! I don't even like tennis! <laughs> Zuckerberg's such a dipshit. He thinks I like tennis because of my headband photographs. <laughs> Not so smart now, silicone dick shit. You gotta tell truth to power, that's what you gotta do. Um. So I've been, I've been brought here to inspire you guys. Um, cause you're looking at a guy, you're looking at a guy, uh, four years sober. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How's that working out, Tone? No residual damage at all! I love living in the moment! <laughs> My impression of life with no booze. <laughs> Message. Keep it between the hedges, guys. You don't want to lose it. But uh, now I've learned on my journey, though. You know, I really have. I've been on such a journey. Um, <laughs> shut up, you guys. I've been on such a journey, healing, and um, uh, <laughs> I've uh, on my journey. I've learned, and if there's, I've learned. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I've known that for ages. But if there's any. <laughs> any doctors in, this is a free one for you guys. If you get a patient that comes in and they've had a 30-year alcohol problem and they think a secret cocaine habit's gonna fix it, <laughs> it doesn't! I found it made it worse! Significantly worse! But I'll tell you what it did, speed the process up a bit! I chucked 20 extra years of drinking off the top end of my life. Cause I got it done! <laughs> Say what you like about cocaine, but it makes you a doer, don't it? <laughs> makes you a doer and a wrongin'. Makes you a wrongdoer, come on! <laughs> this is a good drug! <laughs> That's my last memory of cocaine, all alone in an Ibis hotel. Ooh! Ooh, it's a good drug! There's no downside to this! Ooh. <laughs> By the way, I'm right-handed if you're wondering about that technique. <laughs> Get out of here, you bastards! But if you've, if you've had a 30-year uh, alcohol problem and, uh, and you've hung on to some of your family, way to go! <laughs> um, but you know, if, if they do welcome you back in, the, uh, you... Uh, you, uh, they will, they will, uh, encourage you to get some therapy, and, uh, you're looking at a guy who's done some therapy. I know, as soon as I came on, probably a lot of you went, this guy seems pretty fucking sorted out. <laughs> now, now, here's a guy who's done some therapy. Yep! You betcha, done some therapy. I don't even call it therapy anymore, I call it thaps. <laughs> That's how hooked in I am. This time last year, I was actually still working class. But, uh, not anymore, fuckers! 
I've done the saps. I've done four sessions, four sessions. Because I thought, you know what, 30 year alcohol problem, drug addiction, drug. Four sessions, boom, done, nailed it. Get back on the road, T-Zone. Real reasons, you do four, you gotta start paying for it after that. Actually, do you know what the real reason I only did four is? And this is, this is definitely what I want you to think, is that I just didn't, after four, I just, I just didn't want to end up being one of those guys that was too sorted out. You know those weirdos, people who are happy with who they are. Hey, you're a freak show! I prefer people who are just like me, full of low self-esteem, faking life. I'm socializing, I'm socializing. I'm making eye contact, I'm making eye contact. But I'm not listening, cause I'm making eye contact. How long do I hold it for, this fucking eye contact? I'm breaking eye contact. I'm making new eye contact. <laughs> real people socialize. <laughs> Fuck me, the idea of going out with a group of eight friends and everyone sits around listening to what each other has to say freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> oh, how are you? <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> oh man, I take you what? Um, I wanted to be, I wanted to be controversial guys, you know, I just wanted to get out there and do some controversial stuff, you know, be edgy. Um, and then, you know what, I had a good look at my worldview and I thought, mm, Saws, everything checks out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think correctly on pretty much every front. Sawzalls, nothing controversial here. Uh, Unless you're a warmonger! So... <laughs> to have a good reason to keep that fucking sound in your show. <laughs> no! I told him no! Don't have me on microphone at home, mate, so you can fuck off. I don't want, uh, I don't want anyone to think that, um, you know, that I know everything about therapy, you know, after my four sessions. Um, I'm not an expert on therapy, but I will say this, and if there's any therapists in, or uh, any other people who've done therapy, you guys will back me up on this one. Therapists do not like it if you only talk about World War II. <laughs> Feels like you're hiding behind World War II, Tony. Fuck you! It was a horrific war! And I've watched too many damn documentaries! I can barely sleep at night, waking up in a cold sweat. Fuck! And he wrote it. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, then, you know, and then when I was thinking about doing, uh, you know, at the, the other clubs, thinking about, you know, getting an edge, uh, I thought, well, I'll just check on social media, see? And I realized, ooh, this is exactly the wrong time to do that. <laughs> then you walk outside, seems fine. <laughs> Fifteen years ago, great time to be Frankie Boyle. Not so much now. <laughs> and he wrote up. Apart from, <laughs> um, oh man, I tell you what, but um, uh, fuck, comedians are different now. So I was in the Edinburgh Fringe. They're all different now. Those comedians. Now they're coming out of university doing the comedy. But they come up there, the fringe, and they do their shows with their beginnings, middle, ends. Bullshit! It's not, it's not a level playing field anymore! Comedy used to be for losers like us who had run out of life options. I ain't gonna get no employment anytime soon. God damn it, this is the last straw for me. And I'm too soft for scaffolding, too soft. I'm too soft for scaffolding, it's the banter I couldn't handle. Too much, they're too hurtful with their mouths, you know. Those guys with their banter, and it's the hots, it's the hots and the banter. And the lack of strength, those are the only things stopping me from doing goddamn scaffolding. I 
I've always tried to ingratiate myself with the scaffolders when they're near my flat. I'm always like, fuck, I grew up working class. I'm a working class guy. I can relate to these guys. I'm going to go and have a chat with them. So, you guys uh, got a lot of... There's quite a lot of little guys are fit with the lifting and taking. Yes, I will fuck off. Yes. <laughs> And you know what it is? I finally worked it out. I finally worked it out. It's because they can just smell the liberal arts on me. <laughs> they do. They just go, this guy oozes theater. Thank you. <laughs> I've just gone too far. I've gone too far. <laughs> but, uh, I just love stretching as well. So I was doing a gig in Wales last night. I know. Uh, yeah! And I was looking at all <laughs> I was looking out at all those Welsh fuckers out there. <laughs> and I thought it's great if you've got, whatever your identity is, like I couldn't give a fuck, but if, it's nice if you've got I was looking at those Welsh fuckers and I thought that's a good identity to have, isn't it? You know, because if you feel there was a lady in the middle, she was well lit and she was being all Welsh there, and I thought, if she's feeling shit about the rest of her life, all she has to do is remember she's Welsh. <laughs> that would cheer you up, wouldn't it? You know, yeah, I've got that. I've always got that. All you need to do if you're feeling down, go out, get a sword, go into the woods, and do well shit. <laughs> I'm a fucking warrior through the mists of time. You'd feel great. It's the same thing, whatever it is. Maybe you're a Sikh. Same thing. Go grab a sword, head out into the woods, and do Sikh shit. I'm a fucking Sikh, you prick. <laughs> Two Sikhs, they're both from Scotland. Hey, fuck. There's no British army with those eyes. Or maybe you come from up north, which is lucky, that's my favourite voice. I'm a fucking Viking, I am. I love doing Viking. Going around fucking stabbing, I love it, love bit of fucking stabbing. I don't like rowing though, don't like it, not gonna lie to you. I love it. I love fucking stabbing, don't like rowing. There you go, Dublin, we've named that, you can have it. <laughs> but we've had enough of fucking vagging, so we're gonna settle down now. We're gonna settle down and do farming in the Dane law. And at first there'll be a bit of argy bargy with local Anglo Saxons, you know, we'll get on each other's tits for a while. <laughs> But eventually we'll start having barn dances and we'll start kissing. And, if, and we'll sow the seeds of a lovely new language. What a wonderful little trip through British history there, wasn't it? Uh, uh, thank fuck for the DNA revolution though, because now Everybody can go and find out what all the shit that they're from. That's amazing. Because before, if you had to rely on births, marriages, and deaths, there, there, very few people could go far back, could they? Like, po there's always posh fuckers like, yeah, I'm Norman Conquest, actually. You can go to Red Line, actually. My family, we can trace it right back to Norman Conquest. <laughs> but the rest of us, like, we hit dead ends real soon. Real soon. We did, uh, a few years ago, we did uh, Heritage.com. Actually, 150 quid, guys. Absolute bloody snip. Um, and we were really pleased with the service. We went... We went to Heritage. Move over, Danny Dyer! But we did that, and uh, we went right back. It's gonna sound like I'm bragging, but uh, I'm not. This is just, it's just facts, you know? We went as far back on my dad's side. We went right back to my granddad. <laughs> I come from a granddad. It changed my life. I know who I am now. And we know him. <laughs> Mind blown. I just, it made me feel so whole. And, uh, I remember, oh, in the tales my granddad used to tell about our people. <laughs> what kind of people were we, granddad? Our people are mud scoopers! <laughs> we scoop up mud and pack it down on a hill. <laughs> right through the Middle Ages, our people scooped up mud and packed it down on a hill. Right through the Neolithic times, our people could be found scooping up mud and packing it down on a mound. We're mud scoopers and bloody proud. 
And even now when I'm driving through the countryside and I look out and I see what looks like a man-made mound, my heart sings. That could have been my toothless, illiterate ancestors who, who pecked that mud before they carried on pointing at the moon. I'm... And it'd be fun to meet your ancestors, wouldn't they? Apart from the posh ones who worked the looms. You know, all the regular ones. All the regular ones, they'd be all small and superstitious, all... I know that. <laughs> oh, oh, it's back. <laughs> Check your privilege. <laughs> Grandparents are like one finger. Anyway, I think if I had to identify it as anything right at the moment, I identify as Neanderthal at the moment. My third favorite hominid. What's number two tone? Homo Florensis, of course it is. Who wouldn't love the hobbit fuckers to be around now? Oh, they're only that big. And I, I reckon if they had survived, we would have been really good to them. Humans would have been really nice to the Hobbit people. We would have really looked after them. The little Hobbit, they would have a wonderful life, the Hobbits, wouldn't they? <laughs> no, I like, I'm uh, mostly Neanderthal. And, uh, but I was, oh fuck, you know, I love learning about Neanderthals, but it's always sad. So, you know, they fucking went extinct, shit. Oh, fuck. And I was drinking a lot at the time, and I'm not saying this was the catalyst for stopping. It shouldn't have been. <laughs> but, uh, then they discovered in 2014, no, Tony, Neanderthals didn't go extinct. They live on. In all of us! Yeah! How horny are humans, am I right? <laughs> we won't let you die! Sapiens! Dirty fuckers! I was so excited, I raced home, looked in the mirror, squinted my eyes, yeah, where's the near? Oh yeah, I can tell them a bit Neanderthal, yeah! Yeah, it's lovely, they reckon they had high voices as well. Yeah! Yeah, a bit Neanderthal, fucking as it goes, yeah! What, what you sapiens, are you? Yeah, come on in, we've got a ten month gestation period. It's too long, mate. <laughs> What's yours? Nine months? Reckon you, you're on to something now. <laughs> Isn't it great? Everybody in this room, between two and five percent of your DNA, Neanderthal. Up to you to decide whether you're closer to the two or the five. If you got a hairy belly, probably four. I don't like making plans. Probably five. <laughs> DNA 8%! 8! Yeah, they tried to say it was a mistake. They tried to say it was a mistake. No! I'll take my 8% Neanderthal and I'll just get on with one of my many Neanderthal advantages. Like a high rate of autism. Check! Super amounts of depression. Feels about right. But my greatest Neanderthal advantage is my heavy brow ridge. Look at my heavy brow ridge. Many people do not like a land with a low-lying sun. I do not mind a land with a low-lying sun. Because my heavy brow ridge shield me from it. Look at these people over here. They do not like weather happening all up in their eyes. And weather does not happen all up in my eyes. Because of my heavy brow ridge. It's not a great neutral face, is it? This is my neutral face. That means when I'm doing this, I'm a liar. Oh my god, that guy's so fake. Uh, the, the... Tony is so present right now. Well, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to finish on a song, and uh, then I remembered. Uh, I don't know how to do that. But I thought, you know what, I need to be, br you're going to be brave like British people. If you think about it, uh, that one of the reasons I moved to this country is the music. The music that's come off these islands. These shitty little rainy islands on the edge of Europe. <laughs> these horrible little rocks out in the middle of the ocean. 
The amount of music per capita that's come from these islands and gone out in the world is phenomenal. Like, per ca- it's unbelievable. You can go anywhere in the world, you turn on the radio, you go, yeah, it's one of ours, actually. Fuck off. <laughs> you should be proud of that every day. It's wonderful, you know. And it is. It's that spirit. He was saying it earlier. It's that, and this is the thing that unites all of you, is you've all got that kind of fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> And that's why, of course, Brexit was the most rock and roll vote in history. Man, Europe didn't know what hit them. <laughs> the look on their face. What? Fuck off. Are you sure? Could be against your own economic self-interest. Fuck off. I mean, come on, everybody. Everyone's always banging on about uh, how everyone was divided, and I think that's bullshit. I think as soon as that result came in, everybody at the same time had the exact same feeling, whether you're a Remainer or Leave, right? It doesn't matter. Everybody just had a little piece of them. Whether you were about to get super happy or super sad, everybody was just a bit proud. <laughs> just go, fuck it, eh? what are we like, eh? We're fucking nuts, we are. I did not see that fucking happening. <laughs> Fuck you. We're fucking not as much. <laughs> so. <laughs> was the good guy. We know what's coming, don't we? But Paul Pot was not the good guy. That's all I got on that one, but... <laughs> Do you know, I forgot I was old the other day. I forgot I was old. Actually, I forgot to breathe last week, twice. <laughs> You know, you forget to breathe once and you're like, <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck? Well, I guess it's a buzz of a sort. But twice, that's all you can think of. <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Well, I forgot I was old because I was listening to a documentary. And it was about the insects. They were saying, you know, in the last 30 years has been a catastrophic drop-off in insect numbers. And I was thinking about that. I was going, there's way less insects now, is there? And I thought, fuck. I've noticed that! That's super old! I have become science! What about the bees, Tone? You think they're gonna make a comeback? Reckon they will. What's your data set? Hunch? I got a hunch! They're gonna be alright! Get on board! But you know what it's like when your children come home brainwashed from school? And they're... And they keep banging on with their ideology. Uh, um, They're banging on about climate change. Climate change, climate change. Now look, uh, secret, I agree with them, but I don't like hearing it from a fucking kid. (laughs) So what I like to do is I like to scare them with being old. Yeah, you you think you, I'll tell you what, you want to gather around kids. It's worse than you think. You know what you call May? That's not what May used to be. May's never supposed to be four degrees in the morning, go up to 12, drop down to nine, finish off at 31 degrees at night. That's not what May is. Now run off with your friends and be terrified. It helps if you do Texas voice on that too. Of course, the best thing about being old, though, and you back me up on this one, oldsters, is the drop-off in sex drive. Am I right? What a fucking relief! You people in your 20s and 30s, you're living the nightmare right now. Oh, pretending you're not horny all the time. Oh, y'all got a meeting over at 9 o'clock. That's you on the inside. Oh, yeah, it is. Good call. Not me! None of that! Nothing. I'm finally cool for the first time in my life. 
I feel so comfortable around Tony. You should. <laughs> it's not strictly true, but it's gross saying otherwise. <laughs> Old guy Tony. Anyway, about uh. Oh, I worked out how to be sexy in my marriage finally. Uh, I worked out that if I do 50% of the chores, <laughs> who's that handsome guy in the flat? Not 51, I'm not a mug! <laughs> now, I, like most people, live in a tiny little flat, and in my tiny flat, we've crammed it with too much life. There's my wife and me and two kids and a massive German Shepherd. Way too big. Enormous black German Shepherd. He should be in a big house and he's in a tiny flat. Big, smaller the flat, bigger the dog. Am I right, guys? And my wife and I were like, well, we're just little country kids living in the city. We need more animals. I was, I'm obsessed with getting a grazer, you know. She's like, well, you're not going to get a cow in here. Huh? I just like the idea of hay eating animals. The kids came up with it. That was a great idea. They said, uh, what about a rabbit? Yes! Rabbits eat hay! And of course, rabbits have no known predators. <laughs> living in the flat. <laughs> waiting for its arrival. Gorgeous! I just love watching their inner species fun, and we leave the ca we leave the cage open and let them play. I knew a little rabbit. I knew a little rabbit. He's called Woodstock. He's got himself a best friend. His best friend's a German Shepherd. He's called Wolfie, and they play together. But it's always super, 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 supervised. <laughs> then one day, mommy went to the kitchen. Kids went to their room because they're 10 years old and they can't concentrate on fuck all. <laughs> if I find out who invented Fortnite, I will have to kill them. <laughs> So daddy's alone in the sitting room. Cage is wide open, the plane, lovely, it's cute actually. He licks the rabbit and he gets him all wet. Then I remembered I needed a poo, so I went away and sat down on the loo with my trousers around my ankles. And then I remembered, oh no. I'm forgetting some oh, oh no. I shuffle back to the sitting room with my trousers around my ankles. It was disgusting. A grown man with a shirt on but no underpants. And Wolfie's head was inside of the cage and his head was moving around just like he was chewing something. Oh. really changed our relation oh shit no 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 but then I looked out of my peripheral vision there was Woodstock twitching his nose don't know what you're worried about mate it was fucking behind a sofa you can <laughs> that's a new voice for you but it begged the question what the hell was Wolfie eating Turns out he was eating all of Woodstock's poo. He was trying to hide his scent from any other potential predators. Wolfie thinks he's got himself a puppy and puppy is made of rabbit. Oh, 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 oh. And the song stops there, but uh, it can still go really wrong. Great. You were very kind. Thanks so much for having me. Take